So, let's discuss this scenario. Right? Uh, last Blitzkrieg is a, an examination or a covering of the 1944 German in, incursion into Belgium, if you will. Uh, so there's, within the game itself, there's a, a dozen scenarios, I'm not sure exactly, but this is one of them. It's called Kampfgruppe Piper, um, and it deals with, obviously, Kampfgruppe Piper. He's up here on the northern flank, and so, uh, let's, uh, the thing I really, really like about Vassal is I can click a couple buttons, like I've said before, and whammo. Now I have the scenario, it's set up, and it's ready to rock. The units are set up, um, they're in their correct positions, they have their correct prepared defense and fatigue and the such set to them, and everything's good to go. So let's... Let's sort of examine this scenario now that we've looked at units and we've looked at activations. Okay. So if we zoom out a couple of levels. Heck, how about again? All right. So in not so many words, um, the Germans were hoping to punch through here and ultimately end up over here, which you note is much less hilly and foresty, jump across the Meuse River and up to Antwerp, which is somewhere to the north of there, and that was the uh, ultimate strategic goal. Um, and... Uh, Hitler and the German High Command thought they could pull that off in uh, a few days. Um, the reality of the matter is, if you look at the entire map here, is uh, the German army was able to punch a bulge, hence the name of the battle, something along those lines, and it took them... Uh, a week or two. Um, they had Baston surrounded around Christmas time, which would have been uh, nine days after the beginning of the campaign. So, uh, yeah, they pretty much fell short of their mark. But, um, as a war gamer, or as a gamer, if you will, the actual historical realities are, are not particularly relevant. What's relevant is the victory conditions, eh? And the victory conditions are capturing these uh, blue hexes. As many of them as possible. And then there's some kind of crazy victory condition where if uh, the Germans can exit a couple of SS Panzer divisions off the map, I think they win. But uh, I assume that's not really possible against a competent U.S. player, so I'm not even going to bother with that. Um, So, if we're going to talk about the units and what needs to happen here, um, if we want to start here, and, and again, I'm a big fan of Vassal because it allows this... Uh, easy manipulation of the map board and the counters and 
just viewing the possibilities i if if you're going to play the the game obviously you have to buy it um but i definitely would advise downloading and installing this this uh the vassal and the last blitzkrieg module because it allows you to explore things of this nature very easily so to continue so we have the 326 volks grenadier division up here um historically nominally speaking right they should be able to take um hoffen which is garrisoned by the 3rd of the 395th, 94th, 99th Infantry. Um, the 99th Infantry is in prepared defense. And they have support. Um, it's not a topic we've covered yet. I'm actually going to make a whole new video about support. But... Right, as we discussed previously, right, these guys have an action rating of two. This guy has an action rating of three. This guy's in prepared defense. He's in uh, terrain. Right? He's on a hill in a town. These guy, these Volks Grenadiers, three twenty-six Volks Grenadiers attacking this position is just going to be ugly and a mess. Um, and without a, a, an extremely lucky die roll, not going to succeed. And so that, here's more of the 320, all right, here's my, my boys, the one action rating unit, ERS, I'm not quite sure exactly what that stands for, but uh, in not so many words, the 326, the Volks Grenadier Division sucks. They're not going to do a whole hell of a lot. Um... And they didn't, historically. Uh, I don't believe... I'm not even sure Hoffen got taken. It might have been, but... This division and its push to the uh, west didn't really amount to much. Um, as we scroll down here, we have a, a ridiculous amount of U.S battalions here in the forest hanging out um they're from the both the second and the 99th u.s infantry divisions um they have action ratings between four and two there's threes right so uh, they're not some of them are i guess four good troops two not so good troops but um, there's a bunch of them here, and they're uh, right here next to this one. Just historically speaking, right, the U.S. had uh, attempted some kind of an uh, offensive here up to the um, north, north uh, west with these divisions and they had kind of gotten beat the hell on and so this is uh... they're actually supposed to be resting one would have hoped or thought um, so that's kind of the story behind those guys the 277th folks grenadiers Again, as I explained in a previous uh, tutorial, the the entire German order of operations was that these Volksgrenadier divisions were supposed to punch holes in the U.S. infantry lines, and then the Panzer divisions could just sort of march through. Um, that almost 100% did not happen. And so uh, this this scenario starts us a day into the campaign, and so you have this 
uh, 277th Volks Grenadier. More or less trying to punch through here these uh, the 393rd Infantry Regiment of the 99th Infantry and <laughs> not doing a very good job. Um, to go back to the units, right? These guys have five steps each. So even just inflicting step losses, they're they're going to hang out here for a little while. Um, to get them to actually retreat, if we look at the combat table, uh, right, you got to be rolling an 11 or a 12 with modifiers. Um, these are twos against threes, action rating wise. It's it, it's doable, but it's it's right. It's, it becomes a luck game. It's it's not easy. And if they just want to trade uh, step losses, which is probably what happened on the 16th of December, looking at these 277th folks grenadier units, um, it's going to take a long time. So behind the 277th is the 12th SS Panzer Division, and these guys are something of a mixed, if you will, unit. Um, there's some, right, there's some tank battalions here. These guys are pretty serious, armored infantry, uh, Panzer Grenadiers and such, armored reconnaissance, Bremer. Some Jag Panzers. I mean, there is some punch here, but then you get to this other piece of the division, and these are uh, dudes in trucks or bicycles. Even if we flip them, they become threes. I mean, they're not. I, I wouldn't be writing home about these guys, right? Nonetheless, uh, the 12th SS Panzer is certainly. Uh, effectiveness wise better than the 277th Volks Grenadier but you'll note the 12th SS Panzer is behind the 277th Volks Grenadier and as we covered in the previous tutorial mixing formations and getting them all scrambled together is um, not uh, conducive to your activation, your snafu die rolls, and so, um, as the German player, there is definitely something of a quandary here as to what to do with this mess. I mean, ideally, right, you would, 277th would get the hell out of the way and let the 12th SS Panzer try to punch through these Americans in the woods, and without doubt, the 12th SS Panzer would have a much better opportunity and capability of punching through the Americans, but getting the 12th, the 277th Volksgrenadiers out of the way is not uh, a small order. And, you know, again, this is one of the things I, I really like about this game. It's, um, here's a division, and it's sitting on the line, and it's in contact with the enemy, and just getting it out of the way and getting a new division in, in is not an easy operation and I don't believe historically that would have been an easy operation so it it really is capturing reality um, in this abstracted way right um, so if we scoot down here to the south of the board of the scenario board um, all right, so there's our end of the scenario. We've got the 12th Volks Grenadier, which is actually uh, one of the more <coughs> competent and capable Volks Grenadier divisions. And again, though, they're up against um, Americans in the woods, entrenched. Um, can they attack and push these guys out with their better action ratings as opposed to the 277th? 
yes, they have better chances. Um, twos versus fours, yes. Uh, but again, it's it's not a it's not a sure thing at all, and that's where things get kind of messy. Um, all right, so assuming the 12th Volks Grenadiers want to push these 394th Regiment dudes out of their way and march to the west, uh, should be doable, probably doable, but a bad die roll or two and right this is gonna what we're gonna see on the 18th of December in the morning and that would be bad for the Germans at least um, and right as the American player uh, what there's not much in my mind really to worry about here um, you got six steps, you got five steps. So these guys are not, because there's there, there's some different combat mechanisms which allow units to attack and inflict step losses. And so these guys could take some step losses. Um, but five or six, they're, they're not going anywhere. Um, unless we get lucky with the 12 folks grenadier. Uh, down here on the south is really the action. And this is, uh, I would argue, what this scenario is all about. Conf Group Piper, and there is Conf Group Piper. He's right there. These dudes along the road, and him, right? HQ. And so, uh, I, I've run this through my head a few times, and on Vassal, and, and I'm assuming that the optimal thing for Conf Group Piper to do is to roll up there, and then it becomes uh, an interesting question. Um, historically, Piper cruised up that road, right, and right, they ended up there, they massacred some Americans, and they went down there, and up there, and they got Stavalot, um, went down this road, bridges were blown, so they got stuck going back up here, and they uh, got stuck. Um, I kind of have a personal uh, investment in this particular area of Belgium. I uh, visited these towns. Uh, there's some museums and whatnot in this area. I went to Boggins, um, visited the museum. I was in Stumont. Laglise has a uh, King Tiger parked uh, there. It's pretty cool stuff. But that was historically what... Uh, what Piper and his boys did, they ended up getting, basically, they got cut off and had to, uh, had to abandon all their equipment and pretty much, uh, scared the hell out of the Americans, but didn't really accomplish a whole lot. Um, if we look on the big map, the... German plan was that Conf Group Piper was going to punch right through there and then go up to there, north. And they got somewhere in this area and pretty much got stopped dead by the Americans. Um, and it was mostly uh, reinforcements coming up from here. The 82nd uh, Airborne Division got involved. Um, and yeah, 
They just... And I thought this myself as I drove through the area, which was, uh, who in the hell thought it'd be a good idea to drive tanks through this terrain? And you will see that again and again in uh, Last Blitzkrieg. Um... I'm actually kind of interested to know if that's not the case in the other Battalion Combat Series games, right? So they now are dealing with uh, the desert. And so is this uh, limitation of movability gone in the desert or not? Um, Feel free to post an answer to that question. I'd be very interested. Um, so yeah, so that's what I would be thinking to do with Conf Group Piper. Um, an alternative, and probably what should be done, is Piper punches his way west a bit here, and then he punches north, taking, uh, what do we got here, Bulligan? Camp uh, Elsenborn, Crinklet, and Rockoth, or at least cutting them off, right? You've got, um, this is, gets more into the, again, the higher order of the game, but, right, so you got the 99th Infantry HQ here in Crinklet. We have the 2nd Infantry HQ here in Nowhereville, near Elsenborn. But uh, I believe, and when we play it through, that Conf Group Piper is going to be able to fairly easily punch up through here and uh, and jump those uh, HQs. Um, that's not historically what he did, but that's what I'm going to do as the German player. Um, because, uh, right, so we jump those HQs, they have to fall back, I don't know, somewhere over here, and now suddenly we've got all these American units, of American battalions, probably out of supply, um, and in this game, being out of supply, you start taking step losses, and it's just going to get real ugly for the Americans real quick which, as the German player, is exactly what you would want. Um, The uh, 3rd Fallschirmjäger Division, uh, let's be honest, they're twos, so they're not uh, right against fours. Yeah, the 14th Cav doesn't have many steps, but these are uh, these are light armor, and they have four action ratings. I mean, so these are quite competent um, light armor units versus uh, noob German paratroopers. So they're not going to... Uh, make a lot of headway, except for the uh, 3rd Fallschirmjäger Division has three inherent artillery points, and they have two attached artillery points. So the plan here would be to march these mediocre uh, Fallschirmjägers up, and start dropping arty on the uh, U.S. tanks. Uh, behind the lines here is the rest of the 1st SS Panzer Division. This is uh, the part that Conf- that Piper had not grabbed historically. Um, these guys are reasonable. Fours, um, but there's not a lot of armor back here, and so um, they can do their thing. They follow up, 
uh, probably help support the third Falschermager. That's sort of the idea of what we're going to do in this scenario, and 